Welcome, everyone. This is the first episode of the Roots and Ropes podcast, where Nathan, your host, talks about lessons, concepts, and ideas through the youth that I'm learning as a teenager going through the journey together to help us succeed, elevate ourselves, and deal with today's problems in this world. Today's episode specifically, first episode, we're going to be talking about finding your passion. And we're going to understand the concept of finding our passion and how to do it. A disclaimer before I start though, the concepts, ideas, lessons that are presented in this episode are what I'm learning going through the journey with you. Although these are my methods, it can grow, be adjusted, and expand as we grow because we're all developing into something better and constantly revising. But now, let's actually get into the episode. So who is this for? Well, this is for anyone who doesn't know what passion means. They're confused on what their passion is. They don't have this flame inside of them. They don't know where it is. And who anyone who thinks that they know what they want to be, they have this small doubt or they don't feel truly this is the thing that they really want to do on the inside or they don't have this prolonging thing like it's not from the inside it's more reasonable it's reasonably based and it's intelligently based not emotionally based and a quick warning is to not zoom through this because even though the finding part is a little bit later in the episode there are important concepts and small ideas that need to be understood that make up this whole process of finding our passion so what is passion well, passion, it's the thing that you love to do. It's the thing that you wake up motivated to do every single day. It's where your flame is ignited. And that flame inside of you is where you found it and discovered it, and it just comes out, and you start seeing incredible things because of your passion and because of you. So why should you have a passion? Other than the basic reasons of it gives you a happy place to go to, and it gives you something to enjoy, it makes the work that a lot of us as the youth are fearing, it makes it fun. It helps us to achieve our purpose, which fulfills you. As a Christian, I believe that it's the gift that I was given from God. But if you don't, that's okay, because I respect other religions. But it's a thing that you are meant to use. And so, again, a side note, don't follow someone else's passion. And so what does that mean? Don't follow someone else's hopes and dreams unless you want to be exactly like them. And we don't because we're unique. There's nothing wrong with taking advice or considering their recommendations and learning from them. But everyone has a unique story. So that gives them a unique knowledge, perspective, and experiences. And when you're making decisions, you have to consider your own expect- perspective and how they are looking at things. You can't just say, okay, this is that and that. You have to actually take in the whole part and then consider it. So the first part in finding your passion is to evaluate. Your current dream job. So why do you want to do that job? And then ask yourself why again. An example of that would be, let's say I want to be a lawyer, which I don't. So I'm going to give a bad answer to this question because those are my reasons. And for me to be a lawyer, I'd ask myself why once. And that would be, it's because what society sets. It's what the norm is. Because I can earn a decent living. It's safe. It's what everyone else tells me to do. I know with that, I don't even have to ask myself why twice. I already know that's not the right choice for me. If you're giving reasons like that, definitely do not consider that. Okay. A good example, if I want, if that was my passion, would be, is because I'm tired of seeing people who are innocent but wrongly accused and put in crime for the rest of their lives or for 20 years when they did so- when they are accused of something that they didn't do. That right there. That's a purpose. And your passion right there is to be a lawyer. And purpose is something that we'll talk about later. Purpose and passion go together. You use your passion to fulfill your purpose. Is there a flame that burns inside of you, though? Is there, has there been a flame that's, that you've hid? Has there been a flame that's shining through but no one else sees it or that you only see it or that you want to hide it? And if you don't have that flame, that's okay because you do. It's somewhere there inside of you. You just either haven't found it yet you haven't recognized it yet those are probably the two reasons you have to discover your flame but have there been dreams inside of you that you've hid that's the first question you can ask yourself were there dreams like you wanted to be an athlete but you hid it from everyone else because everyone told you oh the chances are really slim and it's unrealistic which is true but if you believe and commit that you can accomplish it you have a lot higher chance than just people telling you it's slim and not even going for it 
and there's a famous quote. It's said, been said by many people. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So at least take the shot. See if you actually have a passion for it. And maybe being an athlete comes into a different aspect. But have there been dreams inside of you that you hid? Also, was there anything that you considered that you or someone else told you it was unrealistic? Either you told yourself that it was unrealistic or someone else told you that it was unrealistic. Is there anything that you've considered? And this may seem like a childish question, and some things may be cheesy or whatever, but it's a realistic question. What have been your childhood dreams? What have you dreamed as a child? Are those dreams still here? If those dreams were just as a child, you're absolutely sure after you saw what society was, like if it was to ride on a unicorn or whatever, then okay, don't answer that question. But if there's been something that you've wanted to be as a child, and you hit it, you haven't told anyone, and you've shown it to people, and people said it's unrealistic, or you're still believing it, maybe that's your passion. Then you've got a straightforward answer. But are, And a side note, all again, is that are your dreams constantly changing? And from personal experiences and talking to people, that usually means you've either found something that's like a good hobby, or you're lacking enjoyment and funness, or not funness, that's not a word, you're lacking fun things to do in your life and so you're trying to find things that seem cool immediately and so you're actually considering oh maybe that's my passion you have to realize that to make your life fun you have to do the thing that's fun and that's finding your passion so if you don't have answers to those questions or you haven't found your passion already then here i have another list of which i can go through and we can talk about that together so what are you never bored with though and this is also known as a saturday night test if you're not watching Netflix on a Saturday night, what are you doing? And are you doing that consistently every Saturday night? If it's family time, I mean, maybe your passion is family, and I would assume it's not, but maybe it is. Or what are you never bored with? This is a deep question, and this is going into purpose, so I won't spend too much time on it. But what do you? why do you think you were born? Why were you put on this earth? Some people say it's because I was born on this earth to live a happy life and then die. Maybe that's you and maybe that's not. That's okay. Some purposes are different. Some have a bigger impact. Some have a smaller impact. But they can all have an impact. One thing you cannot do is during these questions, you cannot ask someone else because they'll give you recommendations and then you'll just go back to the starting process of finding something that you are not meant to do. It's what other people want you to do. So do not ask anyone. Do not ask anyone. Please don't. Unless it's your last resort. Unless it's your last resort, then you can consider it. Not even go for it, but consider it. And if there's someone who truly knows you, who you truly trust, who can give you an honest opinion, not what society thinks is realistic or whatever it is. Because, yes, it's important to have reality in your mind. It is important. But when you're looking for your passion, you want to take that out for a second and then put it back in when you go back. That's what I do, because otherwise I, I would have never found my passion. A question that you can ask yourself, though, is if money wasn't a thing in this world, what would be your passion? What would you do that you'd never get bored of? Or what are you good at? But when answering this question, it does get difficult again, because finding your passion is a difficult process by itself. So what are you good at? You want to take knowledge out of the picture, because I found, at least with myself, I was knowledgeable in math. So I thought I liked math. I thought, I, I thought that that's what I wanted to do. I even considered being a mathematician. Then I realized the only reason I liked math is because I was good at it. And so I thought, okay, maybe I like it. Knowledge can be good and it can be bad in this situation when you're trying to find your passion. Overall, you do want to have knowledge, though. What do you love? What do you truly love? What do you want to be good at? Is it a skill? Is it a job? And Why do you like that job? You always want to ask why to the level that no one asks it. You want, if it's CPR asking it twice, then you want to ask it four times. Ask it at least an extra once, but try to ask it twice or more. Which people do you look up to and why do you look up to them? Is it because of their success or is it because of what they do? Is it because of the impact they make? Is it because of the house they live in? And if it's because of the house they live in or money related stuff, then yeah, sure, look up to them, but take that out of the picture when you're trying to answer your passion. When you're trying to find your passion, when you're trying to discover it. When do you feel happy the most consistently, though? Is there a specific place that you feel happy? 
Is that because it's your home? Is that because you're seeing people? Or is it because just the mood that it sets? Maybe the vibe that it sets? Or the stuff that you do there? And if you're saying that, oh, it seems fun. Or it seems cool. Like, I've, al- I've always been interested. Those are not exactly good signs. Those are things that can be your hobby. Or that can be something that you do on the side. Those are not exactly things that you have that flame inside. And it should be like, even though this is from Kung Fu Panda, it should be like inner peace, okay? And if you can't focus on this, that's okay. And if you can't, that's excellent. But does it bring you joy? Would you be fulfilled? Is this your maximum potential? Is this as far as you can go? If you truly do this, pursue at it, is that your maximum potential? And it's some, had, has it been something that you, you've thought you've had a knack for? Not what other people tell you, and then you told yourself to believe it, and then you believe that you have a knack for it, even if you did? Is it something that you believe you had a knack for? Can you make it a hobby? If you can make it a hobby, then it's not your passion. Unless it's based on what society says. Really, and that's society plays a big factor when you're thinking about these questions. So really, this is a time for you to think about these questions by yourself and answer them by yourself. Take out the risk factor, though, during this process. Even though you want to calculate risk, take it out during this process. I'm going to recommend that for that to you. But it's not your backup plan. It's not that plan that you formulated your option B. It's the plan that you've never told anyone and that you've never executed on. It's a plan that's not a backup plan. It's your dream plan. What do you care about? Who do you care about? Does it make you happy? It's got to make you happy. Sure, you got to be happy, but it, that also has to make you happy. Is it stress-free? Is it the one thing that you go to when you're stressed or when you have the free time? Or is it nothing that seems better? There's nothing that seems better. It's perfect. It's a match made in heaven. And I said seems because I couldn't think of a word, but seems, again, you still don't want to use it even for that in this process. Do you feel, though, that that could be your legacy, the thing that you could be known for? Is it fun? Do you like learning about it? And one thing to think about when you like learning about it is if you like learning about it, if you truly love learning about it, not like, then the teacher or the classroom or the environment shouldn't affect it because you're so intrigued by the knowledge. If that has a factor, even a big factor, then it's probably not something that you love or the thing that you were meant to do. If it has a small factor, then that's understandable. Or are there struggles and experiences that you've gone through that you would like to solve? Maybe that's what you were meant to do, and that's your purpose. And then you take your passion from your purpose. The next step in this process is connecting the dots. For what you're good at, again, eliminate everything that comes out of you being knowledgeable in it. Knowledge is not a factor in this process, okay? And for all the questions, not just what you're good at, take knowledge out of the factor. Knowledge is something it's something that can't be really portrayed in the heart with my own experience of course if you found it to be portrayed in your heart well then good for you that, uh, that's all i can think of if you haven't found that one thing yet then maybe you have to go find it maybe you have to go explore your options maybe that's what you can do during this coronavirus is to go explore your options and find new things that you can do because if, if there isn't this one thing that stands out to you or these top three or these top two or these top four Top four is a lot, though. Top three that stand out to you, then maybe it's just you exploring. I thought I had found my passion coming. Personally, I thought I wanted to be an engineer. And then I explored other stuff that I was interested in. And I found what I really wanted to do. I found that I wanted to make an impact on the youth. That's our world's future. Is there a specific skill that underlines coming back to the topic? And if it's a career, why does that career excite you? Again, take money. Take it out of the picture. Please, take it out. It's, it's on the inner. It's inner. It's emotions. And don't eliminate anything yet because you always want to keep your mind open. And the last step, of course, is picking one. One thing that you can do, though, is to imagine doing every single one of them. Imagine and then reflect. Reflect if that's what would make you happy, if that would fulfill you, if that's what you want to do. Again, if there's this big one or these top three that stand out, pick them. But if they're blending in with the rest of the list, these top three or these, this 
big one. If you're blending in, then it's not a big one. It's not a top three. It can be reorganized. But this is not what your pa this is not what your career should be. Yes, you found your passion, but it's not what your career should be. It's what your life should involve. And sadly, that's it for today's episode. Your life should involve it. That's a concept that I'll teach in the next two episodes, which will be about the passion project and Ikigai. Thank you for watching today's first episode. I know in the later years, it'll be a lang landmark, so I really look back at this. Thank you for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and share. Because like I say, whether you think it or not, someone probably needs this. So share, subscribe, and if you can, leave a five-star review. Thank you.